Hey guys, welcome to my microwave dinner all dinners tutorial. Here I'm just gonna run through all the tricks I do and important settings and stuff um, and give you guys a quick explanation of what I'm thinking about when I'm doing the tricks and how I approach them. So hopefully uh, new players can get into speedrunning this category relatively easily. Oh, hello. So first off, uh, we're gonna go over important settings. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have fast dialogue and skip dialogue on. Actually, you probably just need skip dialogue, but I keep them both on. Um, and also, turn around crouch. Uh, you need to turn on. Turn around crouch is important because if we go over here, um, it's the best option we have for jumping high. So a normal full press jump goes like this. Oh, also, if you didn't know, jumps are dynamic, so a uh, small press is going to be a small jump a long press is going to be a, a high jump um you can also do a, a crouch jump that gets you a little higher um and our best jumping option is the turnaround crouch jump it gets you even higher you'll see me use this later in the run to well, the way turnaround crouch works is when you turn around your character crouches and i just do a quick flick you can jump up and that's the highest you can get chain this with a jump wall jump double jump wall jump is the best combo for going up as high as possible and do that once more turn around crouch wall jump double jump wall jump that's a lot better than doing crouch double jump wall jump because then you can't get back on the wall for the second wall jump Anyways, moving on, we'll start with the route now. I am going to leave the restaurant out of bounds uh, trick to last because it is the most difficult uh, to do and I don't want to sit here trying to get an example for 15 minutes at the start of this video. Anyways, first off, I go over here, grab the 10 chickens in this box. Um, I try to, you'll see me when I'm leaving uh, Fridgebot bonk against this wall uh, as I'm hitting the hitting the load zone um and that is trying to do a trick we call itch rewind time um if you get it you'll see the cutscene kind of play twice and you'll exit um you will uh be able to move early during the cutscene i'll try to get it here but it's i get it like one out of every 15 tries um let's see just something like that yeah i missed it be like this I didn't hit it um i'll come back and try to do that again later uh anyways if you get that you'll be able to move early and you can get these chickens over here um before the cutscene ends and you get teleported back to the spot also if you get a ledge grab while that's happening um that will you can not get teleported back anyways when i jump down here i try to hit this lantern as well and if you do that you can grab the chicken just from staying down here and move on i like to get on this little ledge if you roll down these at the right angle you'll catch and get a lot of speed but sometimes you won't be able to steer there so making sure you go like that uh making sure you aim in a correct direction where you won't bonk before you regain steering is pretty important and then I like to get on here, uh, turn around, crouch jump, double jump, get onto this uh, first palm tree here, make your way over to these, grabbing all the chickens. I don't like, I stopped using the umbrellas because they're unpredictable in their bounces. Instead, I dive down here, just do a, oh, another jump. If you jump out of a roll, you get a little bit of height as well. That allows me to just roll here. Oh, didn't do the jump. Do a, a roll jump and then a double jump and get on here without ledge grabbing or anything. Get all these. Um, when you hit this box, it's important to stand over here so the ones that fall down don't fall down and get sucked to you. Anyways, uh, after you do that, if you get all of them, you should have 63. Sometimes I have 61 or 62 if I miss some of the lantern ones or I'm moving quickly. It's not a big deal. Um, 
Anyways, if we're doing the... I'll explain the restaurant out of bounds later. Um, but if we're doing it standard, not using the restaurant out of bounds, uh, we just unlock the door, and hold forward and go in. Um, and I do not recommend restaurant out of bounds for new players. I'd save that until you're trying to get like a sub nine. It's, or I guess sub 10, you can start to attempt it, but it's really not worth it. Anyways, uh, if we're not doing restaurant out of bounds, we need to do a, no, we just need 100 chickens. Never mind. Um. You, so, okay, what you need to decide is if you're doing 100 chicken runs or 200 chicken runs, 200 chickens, you get, uh, you have enough to, uh, open the lighthouse door without clipping it, which I'd probably recommend for new players, at least bef until you get used to the controls or get the restaurant, or the, I'm sorry, the lighthouse clip, uh, consistent. Um, basically that's gonna decide how many chickens you get wall inside restaurant for I'll showcase the 100 chicken run right here all I do is come up here it's been a while um, just tap that grab that come down I like to do a jump here and then drop it right here sometimes the roll is good and it goes right in front of the door and it allows me to see that was okay and then before I, I drop it while I'm in midair here and then carry on this way rolling in between these chairs is kind of hard you have to get used to it grab the fish come on down here uh, to push the fish here uh, it's a lot easier if you leave him standing up like this if you knock him over it's pretty hard to push come on and retrieve the carrot you just push him. Pretty self-explanatory. Takes a little finesse if he's not cooperating. Um, and I do a quick drop in here. You can come up, stand on the edge, and drop him in. But I do a jump. Kind of let go of midair there. To let the momentum carry him in. Grab this. Put it out here. Because I'm going to push it with this meat. Uh, big chicken leg, I guess, later. Also, something I like to do is if you drop this right here and then walk into it and start rolling, if you do it quickly, you can get it going in the right direction and do a little little jump. It's not necessary at all. Probably saves less than a second. I think it's just cool. Then talk to him. Grab that. Perfect. Trying to make sure, yeah, 73 should have enough. Basically, you want to get all the chickens that you... Decide on where you're getting your chickens when you need them. Uh, if you're doing the lighthouse clip, you only need 100. You can grab all those. And just momentum build all the way over here. I'm at 93. Which is fine. Um, I think I'm low. I can get him over here. Uh, lighthouse clip. This one is pretty precise. Um, and you can mess up. If you don't do it right. It, it can kill your runs basically. Because you're stuck here trying to get in over and over again. Um, the way I do it. Uh, okay. If you're using controller. You're going to want to switch to keyboard and mouse. Um, if you are starting out and you don't know what to use, I'd recommend just doing your entire run on keyboard and mouse. I started on controller, I'm most used to it, I like the movement, but for tricks that require minimizing, which is grabbing the top of your window with your right mouse, like this, you can see the, the animation stops, um, is used in a couple places and you need your mouse for that. Um, so I do a hybrid. Just because I started on controller, I'm most used to it. Um, I do a hybrid thing where tricks that use minimize, I switch to keyboard and mouse, um, which is more difficult than it needs to be if I had just used keyboard and mouse from the beginning. So I'd recommend starting out on keyboard and mouse. But anyways, for this, 
I do a jump jump, minimize like this. That's about the timing you're going for. You can see I minimize when the animations stop. And right, you're gonna have to do this a lot to get a feel for it, but I do jump jump minimize. Jump jump minimize. Let's see if I can get it here. There you go. It's just one of those things you have to practice and get a feel for the timing. It's a pretty precise one compared to the other door clips. Um, so don't be confused if you can't get it. It's just hard. If you figure out the timing, which my timing is jump jump minimize. You do it just at that speed. Jump jump like that. So when you're rolling, you're minimized basically. Or when you're double jumping, I mean, you're minimized. Anyways, you come inside to Lighthouse, and I always go for this uh, plank jump, but it is very finicky. It's hard to do consistently, and it will kill your runs if you're going for it. If you just want consistent uh, climb up the Lighthouse, normally watch other people's runs for uh, a route going up. But to do this, all you do is slide on the wall down on this left side of this plank and the game will launch you up if it catches correctly. Let me see, it's right about there is where you want. Oh, there you go. That was a half one, if we keep doing it. you can get launched all the way to the ceiling this is about how it goes usually in a run my record runs i just get lucky and hit it the first time again if you don't want your runs to be killed by this just climb up normally i am a little insane so i just like going for it every time but the amount of resets it's caused me is a little bit painful I want to get one good demonstration for this video. Come on. But this is reality right here. It's not the, the, the restarting runs for a perfect attempt. This just happens sometimes. There's another half one. Right about... I find the left side works. Most of the time. And it's, it's just one of those tricks. Some days you're on and you'll hit it quickly. And some days it feels like they patched it out of the game. you notice I'm dropping to this box every time. That's just because I like a consistent setup. Um, but you can just jump out of it if it's not working. And like slide down again like that see there we go that's high enough i got pretty much all the way to the ceiling um and you notice i have 100 already so i don't need to worry about going for that safe or anything um, from here we're going to reset to fridge bot uh because we're going to sewers next and this is faster than rolling all the way back so if you didn't have 100, you're at like uh, 97 or 95 or something like that. You can always hit this, get the chicken from that. And I like to roll off this, try to get that speed boost I was talking about before. Because sometimes you can you can catch the edge of this while rolling and build up some momentum. But if not, there's three chickens here as well. So you can get four there. You can come, you can teleport to Fridgebot with a 96 and not really lose much time. Also, I should mention that there is, we have recently discovered you can clip through this door uh, just by kind of doing the same thing I did for the lighthouse clip here, but I haven't practiced this. I don't know the timing that works. Um, and honestly, I think attempting it when you can get 100 chickens so easily during the route we already have um, is probably not worth it. I think you'd lose time more than you gain time unless you hit it perfectly which i haven't been able to do 
but I just walk through, open it normally, and here we come to one of the, another one of the tricks that will probably give you a headache, um, which is cheese jumping, or infinite object jumping, you can do it with most objects in the game, um, the consistent ones we've used so far are the keys and the cheese. Um, and this trick just involves uh, grabbing the object, in this case the cheese in the sewers, jumping... How do I do it? There's jump, double jump, uh, jump, double jump, drop, re-grab, and then it'll reset your double jump so you can jump again, and you can keep chaining this, like this, to basically fly, jump infinitely. Um, on controller, I only do this on controller, I don't know exact, let me see if I can, okay, yeah, I can probably do it keyboard if I really wanted to. Um, and the way I do it, I hold, if you notice on my inputs, I hold A when I'm double jumping. That helps me gain height with them. And I've just found this more consistent. I'd, I'm not sure if other runners do this, but basically, so it's boop, jump, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
Um, so it's very important to remember the cheese that spawns here is the one that will respawn here. If you drop this cheese in the water now, you'll have to go all the way back and uh, and get a, a new cheese. Well, you'll have to get two to open the door and then uh, get another cheese through. So that's why I grabbed this cheese to go for the long cheese jumps over here. And I go all the way up here. See, this this trick is hit and miss for me to kind of gotta do a little delay there to avoid hitting the ceiling and messing you up. You can drop the cheese there. And then this one, you only have to juggle once over this if you do it correctly. And once again, do the drop push aim correctly and hold in that um and, and that's the the pro way of doing sewers however i'm gonna go through a i think if i if i reset the fridge bot and come back in it should all be reset i'm gonna go over a beginner way you can do uh before you get cheese jumps successful or, uh, not successful, what do I mean? I mean, consistent. Because sewers is a place that will kill your runs. Yeah, everything's reset now. Um, I'm gonna show you some stuff you can do to eliminate having to cheese jump as much in your runs. So, if you get, grab the cheese and spin it around like this, you can jump and then... Sorry, it's been a while since I've done this, but you you can you can do it like that. And so I'm just jumping as getting as close to the edge and jumping as far as possible. Uh, when and at, right before I fall, when the cheese is over the lip, I'm dropping it. Uh, this is one of the harder jumps to do it on. Get another good example. There, like that. And that's something you can do to avoid jumping. To avoid doing the the infinite object jumps, the cheese jumps there. You can also just go the long way around. Once again, uh, done quickly. This like safe zone cheese juggle thing looks like this. You just grab that it off put this one on the other side of the door and jump in the water with this one um, and this this jump can also be done over here just like that and you can wait how do we do this uh, open the door you can, this is the cheese jumpless way for this. Oh, something like this. Once again, I'm using the cheese that respawns on this side of the door. That's very important. About to drop it. So we open the door, grab the cheese, jump on top of it, double jump up, and you can drop it up there. Best way to get that one up without doing the cheese jump and then you can go all the way around and there is a way so if you want you can once you get your first cheese up here you can i've never done it this way but some people like to go over here um let me see go up on this pipe 
and then hit this lever to lower the platform over there. And that's the safe way of doing it. That's zero cheese jump way. But if you can, if you get the cheese jumps mildly um, consistent, like you can sometimes do it. This is risky. This is risky because if you drop this cheese now, uh, you will lose a lot of time going back through the emergency exit there and getting cheese back into this room doing the cheese juggle like this but if you think you can at least do it once this again this gap only requires one cheese jump um which is a lot see i dropped it and that requires you to go all the way through over here and you have to put this here Grab the first one. You, you can do a cheeky little push off the platform there to get him over here. Then you need the cheese to open the door. Then you need to go back and get the other cheese. To actually, for this last button here. But if you think you can do it, it'll save a lot of time. You won't have to go up to that pipe up there. Anyways, that's how to do it without the infinite object jumps. It's quite a bit slower and a little... I don't want to say less consistent. It depends on how good you are at the infinite object jumps. But it is definitely faster if you can get those down. Um, now we'll move on to... The volcano door clip so i like to just roll down there hit off the platform so i don't splash in the water and kill myself roll down here and crouch jump crouch jump and then so for the volcano door clip you're doing another you need to set your safe spot again your respawn point um and all this grass up here will set it so you'll see me in my videos i I like to go in the middle here. This is setting my respawn point right here because I'm touching the grass. No. Turn around, crouch jump, wall jump, jump up there. Go on over here. And I'm gonna jump and slide against the volcano rock here to because it will reset you. But because I'm sliding, it will reset you to your respawn point, but because I'm sliding against the wall, uh, it also wants me to stick to the wall, and it will do this weird rubber banding effect, where it will... Oh, I didn't slide. See? That's one way you can mess it up. If you're messing this trick up, you're doing one of two things. Your respawn point is in the wrong spot, or you aren't sliding against the wall. Come on now. Not bad. It's not wanting to slide. There you go. And now you hit the volcano loading zone without having to open the door with 500 chickens. Show that one more time. And set respawn point. Jump up. Slide on wall. Looks like I'm out of practice. Okay. That happens occasionally. Usually it's a pretty consistent trick, though. Once you get it down. Make sure our respawn point is correct. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble sliding against this today. There we go. OK, 
occasionally when you do that, you'll trigger the entrance to the, the volcano warp several times, and you'll see the cutscene kind of skip about and play replay a bunch of times, and call that... When you get in here, all the lava will be, like, not moving, and uh, a lot of the cycles aren't engaging either. We call that static volcano, and it does mess with your gameplay performance. It seems to get really stuttery. Um, it just happens sometimes. You'll have to learn how to navigate the volcano during that and in its normal state like this. I like to just come along this left side here jump. I'm a little off cycle. I'm not sure when these are coming. We're safe there. Uh, you'll learn as you play which ones are usually up, which are down. And if you come right here and do a turnaround crouch jump, double jump, and just float across, you can clear. Oh. Do it like that. You should be able to clear those, uh, lava pillars when they're all the way up. So now coming to the lava door skip, you want to just jump up here. It takes a little try, a little bit of practice to get the correct height. You want to come up here so you're standing on this middle lava spot and i'm switching to keyboard now because it's a minimized trick whoops so you see those uh stars around my head when i bonk the little star halo those are a uh, visual cue i use for this trick so i crouch fold forward when the stars go away uh, I hold minimize for about half a second. Watch. Gone. And you go right through. Remember, you're holding forward and crouch on the keyboard the entire time. Uh, let me showcase that one more time. You can also go through the other way. Get up on there. Crouch. Hold forward. Starts to go away. A little early. And your third. It's that simple. Um, make sure your camera is aligned with the... So when you're pushing forward, you're going straight into it and not sideways or something. Bonk. Hold. Your third. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of minimizing. Once again, minimizing is right-clicking on the top window right here. So you can see it, it like pauses the game and it messes with animations and just lets you uh, clip into things easier and slide through places you would normally be colliding because of an animation. Like normally when he's walking, he's kind of bobbing up and down, but I guess when you do this it doesn't happen. Um, what is that up there? I've never seen that. You see that? Anyways. Um, as volcano uh, lava door clip. You just come down here. Because you're going uphill and rolling it slow. I like to jump and dive. You just go on and grab that. Here's another spot where we warp to fridge bot because we're going to a hotel now for the fifth and final dinner. A uh, cool little tech is if you full jump out of that and double jump up here, you can do it without ledge grabbing. Um, and now for this door clip, um, you can do it just by double jumping at it kind of you're trying to headbang on the top of the uh door frame and you can get in like this but a new clip i figured out is if you kind of do it like you're doing that get that and then you kind of hold up and left oh see that's the the first one i was talking about you can do it that way 
But another way I found that it seems to be easier is if you go like, go like this, and then kind of turn around here. You just go in for some reason. Don't ask me. I don't know. But it seems a little more consistent than trying to get that uh, that one. Which you can get pretty easily if you put some practice in. But sometimes it just doesn't cooperate and it's at the end of the run. So using this like turnaround method, I guess I want to call it. Do a little jump, turn around. Oop. I'm in. It's that easy. Um, so for this, we are abusing, I guess, the way we understand it is if you, t if the game, anyways, okay, we're gonna do like a glitchy ledge grab onto the, this block right here, and to do that, I start the up animation by pressing A, you see how I press A and you climb up, I'm gonna press A and then hit down really quickly to fall backwards and give myself a chance to re-grab. Like that. See how I kind of moved? So I... Oop. That's it. You'll hear yourself re-grab again and just kind of move just a tiny bit. And once that happens, you want to talk to this uh, NPC here. If his speech bubble isn't up, I've found just moving your mouse around, I don't know, shaking your camera, uh, can help it, his chat come back up. I don't know why this works. It just works for me. Hit it. And you'll see, you once you have that glitchy ledge grab, uh, the re-grab thing I showed you, you will, when you talk to him and teleport in front of him, the piece that you're, uh, ledge grabbing onto will come with you. So we do that for that one. We do it again, uh, for this right here. So you jump on it, A down, until you get that little re-grab there, you see it? Right there, and then you talk to him, and it comes with you. When you're right here, you can get kind of like stuck on the ledge. What I do is I, I mash B and uh, hover, sometimes you'll fall down below and you'll need to re ledge grab either on the piece I'm standing on right here or get into the elevator and if you can't do that, hover over to the water and dive into it to uh, kill yourself and reset. Um, there's a couple possibilities, you just have to get used to um, getting off this ledge in a manner that keeps you alive because if you fall out of the world, your game, uh, it kicks you and you'll have to restart. Anyways, once you do that, you come over here, double jump and hover until you can grab on here, climb up, that's kind of bad, but anyways, you make your way around here as fast as possible, and you jump down and get that. Uh, microwave dinner. One thing I should mention about getting microwave dinners out of bounds is that it will not always register that you collected it if you don't fall on top of it from straight above. Like if you come from the, too far on the side or from underneath even, uh, if we're talking about the one outside a restaurant that has a base plate underneath, um, it won't collect it. You have to fall on top of it from straight above and this is just something you have to practice until you can get the feel for where you have to fall like here um and you'll see i'll, I'll get kicked right now uh because you fall out um and that's pretty much it that's everything except for the restaurant out of bounds which i'm going to explain right now uh, once again, I don't recommend this for new players. Um, get your time down under 10 minutes and then think about it. Um, I guess I'll restart game. So this trick caused me to reset like 200 times 
in between my most recent run and the run before it, uh, which is when I started using it. That's why I don't recommend it, because it is just torture to reset over and over again. Um, you'll have a lot better time picking tricks you can do consistently and practicing new ones until uh, you can do them consistently and then putting them in your runs than attempting every single trick in the book going for a world record first try when you've been running for a day. Um, you'll have a much better time just playing against yourself, working on your PB, slowly getting it down, and learning new tricks along the way instead of trying to shove them all into your first run. Anyways, with that said, uh, here is the restaurant uh, out of bounds, which allows you to skip all of restaurant, basically. Once again, I was bonking into that. I was attempting to basically hit the loading zone trigger, the the blue fort port warp, and then bonk and trigger it again so that the second cutscene that plays is the short one and it lets me out earlier. You can save about 10 seconds if you hit that. Um, we have to, to do this, we have to get 60 chickens to open the door to the restaurant. Just the same route I showed in the beginning. Um, Alright, so to do this, we are doing... So, to do this, we are going to... Actually, let me... How do I explain this? So, we're gonna open the... Our goal is to open the... The... We're gonna open the restaurant in the... And then we see the loading zone here, and our goal is to teleport to Fridgebot, and then trigger this loading zone, and we'll get teleported to this to the restaurant only after the cutscene finishes. So, uh, and once we're in Fridgebot, I'll show you without the cutscene going, so we understand each other. Um, the place I like to do it. So what we're doing is a slide warp. This is similar to what uh, we used to clip into Volcano, but we're doing it off of the teleport for when the restaurant cutscene ends. Uh, <clears throat> so once the you teleport and you you warp to Fridgebot and then trigger the cutscene to get into a restaurant, you'll see it going back and forth. It'll switch camera perspectives from where you are back to like the restaurant cutscene and then here and then back to the re next scene of the restaurant cutscene what you want to do is while that's happening make your way over i use here i make my way into this back room just because it's what i have found has worked most consistently for me um i know inferno has used right here which is a lot easier and in funky's run he is used right here which are both um they are both a lot easier to get to than here. It's just gives you more time to set it up. But anyways, uh, this trick uses minimize um, and a slide warp. So as the restaurant scene is ending, uh, you'll see the and it'll go to that shot of the big uh, the big pot where you put the fish in and stuff and. As that's ending, you jump up as high as possible, slide, let go of all your buttons, okay. You jump up as high as possible, slide, and start minimizing. Not too fast. When I start doing this, I went too fast. Um, kind of like that, and then you want to be doing that as the cutscene ends, and hopefully it does, it's not consistent, at least it hasn't been consistent for me, but hopefully uh, you'll end up on the outside of restaurant, out of bounds somewhere. 
Um, let me, I'll attempt it right here. I'm not going to do this until I get it right. Um, just because the video would never end. Anyways, okay. The way you get this, uh, you trigger them both at the same time though, is what I like to do is before I open it, I stand right across against the door. And then once it opens, I tap forward. You can see I'm, I'm basically inside. I'm half inside this, uh, this light inside here. And then I bring up the warp menu, uh, hold forward, press OK, and mash, roll, you go in, I'm jumping, I'm moving over here, kind of bonk, okay, I'm right there, okay, switch to keyboard, that's it, jump, jump, slide, I see I was a little, I didn't jump very high there, um, So it didn't work doesn't work you reset or actually um if you are trying this and you don't have a great run time yet and you don't need it to get a pb or anything like that you could just attempt it you'd only lose a little bit of time setting up the uh the entrance part um you could attempt it and then if you don't get it you're just inside restaurant and you go do restaurant normally and move on that's not a bad idea um, to just kind of throw it in. Once again, let's rewind time. Did I get it? No. Anyways, I'm, I'll attempt this one more time, show you again, and then we'll end the video. If you want a good example of it, uh, you can watch my most recent run of what a successful one looks like. But be warned, it takes me like 20 attempts. 15 to 20 attempts before I actually get a chance when doing it. Some people, Inferno says he's pretty consistent with it. Uh, what am I doing? Sorry. And you, you do have to reset in between each attempt because it uses the first restaurant cutscene that only plays once. So you, you can't just like miss it and then go try again. You do have to reset in the game. So I come against it, against the door, open it. Oh, and to bring up the warped fridge bot fast, you can hit. Oh. Okay, so it opens, tap forward. That's what I do. And then to bring up the, the warp to fridge bot quickly, you can hit escape or enter. And you can just. Do it really fast and it'll come up and hit okay pull forward roll okay i missed it see if you're not close enough that happens um and i i didn't even touch the warp to the restaurant you can try it again if you never warp to the restaurant you can come out here walk forward get like that warp to fridge bot forward roll you're in i'm already moving Come on, come on. Okay, so I'm here. Ready? Jump. Yeah, I missed it. Basically, uh, sometimes you'll end up on the outside of this. And when that happens, you can refer to my my record run. Uh, you just climb over the top. So you'll, you'll end up on this side, right by the entrance. And you'll have to climb over the top onto this the ceiling here onto the ceiling there, roll all the way across, and then you'll see the brick part, but the, you'll see a brick part on the outside, which is this, the microwave dinner will be right under, uh, like here, right down underneath here, so if you go to the left of the brick part and drop down underneath, it'll be there and you can drop on top of it. Anyways, I don't want to make this video too long, it's already good lord 50 minutes long um that's all of the tricks i use in uh my all dinners runs uh and that should give you good building blocks to uh make your own runs remember don't make it too hard on yourself don't put too many inconsistent tricks just starting out 
uh, make sure this is uh, make sure to remember that this is the best way to speed run is to uh, compete against yourself hit your first PB and then keep working on getting it lower and lower uh, hope this helps uh, thank you all for staying this long uh, like and subscribe